poser la question de l'intérêt de la mobilisation. We can ask about why it's interesting to mobilize uh, school history to mobilize people for sustainable development. Well, this interest was perceived earlier for disciplines such as geography, sciences of the living, and economy. But now we're going to try and understand the stakes through three questions: possible obstacles to mobilization historic materials or teaching materials which would uh, need to be uh, fostered uh, for education and the uses made of history in uh, sustainable development education. Why is history occupying an important uh, role? And there are two uh, reasons, mainly the uh, function, intellectual, civic uh, function, and also the legacy, which is sometimes more difficult to, to deal with, the role played in the uh, construction of the nation's identity through what is usually called the uh, national story. The story imposed uh, a number of uh, standards which feeds uh, representations of thoughts on how history must be taught in schools uh, for historians and in the public opinion uh, equally. Now, the danger is that there might be a conflict of scale between history centered on the nation's uh, building itself and uh, something that refers to the adventure of humankind on planet Earth. We don't want to replace the scale with the other. We must articulate them together, and it's not very easy. It's easier said than done. Recently, there have been many articles in the news uh, testifying in that sense. Now, the second danger connected with uh, history used uh, for the sake of uh, sustainable development education would be the use of uh, history being instrumentalized uh, for teachers. Sustainable development, uh, development not only is a uh, standardizing system and is one of the flags of uh, the uh, main environmental story, a story being told to legitimate society choices strong enough to legitimate choices being made by society. And yet we have learned to distrust this type of uh, long story in the field of history. The elements of the story are well identified. They describe a danger, the multifaceted environmental crisis, pollution, exhaustion of resources, erosion of biodiversity. And we have to think about whether humankind can survive on planet Earth. And there is a voluntaristic uh, aspect in the discussion. Everybody must be involved in order to collectively rescue the planet. Now, one concept that puts adds flesh on the story is the concept of Anthropocene invented by Paul Crutzen in the early 2000s, whereby uh, the influence of human activities would uh, take precedence in the biosphere over everything else. And the concept was then disseminated in other disciplines, uh, such as human sciences and history. Christian Bonnet and Jean-Baptiste Fressos, two historians, are trying to explain this in the book shown on, this, on the slide, the consequences of uh, this new perspective in history and also the dangers it represents because it imposes a very specific representation system legitimating this re reaction adopted by societies towards crisis and uh, the fact that they alienate themselves of to uh, limit themselves to uh, political spheres. Now, the second question being asked uh, by way of introduction was, what about historical materials that have been used for an education project uh, integrating uh, sustainable development education? There are several ways. For instance, uh, a story where the reference would no longer be the uh, nation building itself, but uh, the various uh, historiography uh, currents, such as the uh, global histories, uh, because there are several families inside the current, or geohistory. We can try and understand what is global history by looking at this little drawing. Global history tries to understand why men went from being small tribes, uh, nomadic tribes, to uh, building bigger and more complex communities, uh, and they became increasingly connected. And uh, this led to the 30, last 30 years of uh, globalized uh, history. And uh, the geohistory of uh, globalization, for instance, describes uh, 
written by Christian Guatalou, tries to describe the hierarchy of centers in the old world systems and the importance of uh, American, uh, the American continent being captured for the three centuries between the 16th and the 19th century. This geohistorical account is very interesting for different reasons because it provides an explanation uh, over the normal approach in geography, the relationship between man and nature. The second uh, pathway is that of our environmental histories. The uh, object is the study of interactions between human societies and the natural environment. This is a new historiographical current which has a very a slightly different positioning in France because there have been pioneers who really uh, left a trace on the history of this uh, current. Uh, Emmanuel Leroy Ladurie, for instance, and uh, subsequently there was uh, a development in Northern America taking place. Uh, and it had to do also with some militant movements. In, up to a certain extent, historians in France were reluctant to involve themselves in this current. But the current was also supported by environmental archaeology. And over the last decade or so, things have changed. Books have been published. Uh, university networks such as the Rush have started working on the subject. And there was a synthesis published in France uh, last year, Grégory Canet. And this is the book you see on the slide. Environmental history, uh, pollution, uh, risks and disasters, hydro history, the story of uh, rivers, uh, living, the world of the living and the climate. The climate is obviously the subject which, uh, starting in the years 2010, was the most successful subject with many different books, some of which were not written only by uh, historians. And this leads me to the third pathway, articulation uh, between historian accounts and natural sciences. Other disciplines such as biology, ecology, geology have something in common with uh, historian disciplines of human sciences. They have been working on various periods and periodization. They come up with a history which uh, allows to understand the connection between uh, the stories told by historians and periodization suggested by natural sciences. In the 90s, a new concept appeared, that of anthroposystems, which was uh, supported by researchers who tried to understand the uh, workshop areas in which multidisciplinary teams were set up in order to think about the relationship between man and the environment. The uh, teaching uh, use of the anthropo system is far from easy, but it could be a very good idea for sustainable development education. This uh, new type of thought also uh, it tinges on the distinction between uh, nature and nurture, and maybe anthropology uh, should help us think about the distinction between nature and nurture or nature and culture. We're thinking about Philippe Descola's work. Finally, the last question, that of uh, what uses were made of the past or what uses should be made of the past to teach uh, sustainable development. There are, again, two pathways, an assessment, use, of the past, we must think that maybe in the past uh, we can find uh, a kind of ore, something that will help us make a turnkey choice in society, and also the fact that the past will help us think in terms of uh, sustainability. Remind us that history is also the study of changes, and the past must be seen as a process, and this will help us understand which processes are involved in the history of societies. An initiation to complexity, really. Two ideas in order to exemplify those two pathways. The approach suggested by teachers in the uh, I4RME uh, network, uh, teaching about uh, major risks in the uh, Pyrenean Mountains in France. They have tried to develop a book of uh, a handbook of major risks for school teachers and pupils. 
working on the uh, risk culture in the time and in the past dimension, suggesting uh, investigation activities for children and pupils. These uh, will then uh, go around uh, looking for resources and talk to local people and understand how things have been changed in order to adapt to uh, natural dangers such as floods, for instance, and try and understand which dangers are strongly associated with the, the environment they live in. The other pathway that could be integrated in teaching programs or curricula is based on a slightly different tradition uh, versus the uh, anchor tradition in history, a positivist uh, anchorage where milestones have been suggested for pupils. Now, we could find a different kind of history with scenarios, no milestones, but scenarios integrating social elements and also natural elements and natural events. This uh, reminds us of complex thoughts with uh, retroaction, uh, heritage, bifurcations, resilience, etc. And this will help us rethink the future, as uh, Carlos Barros, uh, the famous historian, used to say.